do have announcements? If you were here for the first half, uh, IRSAC has been announced, so go look at the announcements page in Discord. Uh, I guess the little TLDR, uh, November 5th, signups are open. Sign up if you have a full team or if you're an individual and then also white team signups. Uh, but if you really wanna know everything, go to the announcement page and just read. Cool. So true. So join the Discord? Yeah. And then please sign in, sign in again for the research part now. You can go to the signing category, general meeting, react yeah. to sign in. Check the calendar, I do love the calendar, huge fan. Oh, oh no. Uh, join the mailing list if you haven't already. It's how to know what's coming on, or going on. Meet the sponsors, clap it up for the sponsors actually. <laughs> Run it up. Keep it going, keep it going. I love the sponsors. And then this is this week's cybersecurity news. I'm gonna be hitting a Microsoft patch that just came out, an Uber breach as of yesterday, and the iOS 16 plus patch. Is there volume? Hello, is that better? What the hell? What do you think about that? That's good. Sarah deceived me. All right, so first we have the Microsoft patch. So once again, we are asking Windows users to please update their system. They recently patched 60 security holes and five of them were labeled as critical vulnerabilities. And then the most urgent is a Windows common log file system exploit, which allows, uh, or the exploit code has just recently become public and it is being tracked as that. And basically after gaining a foothold in the system and being able to run code like just on the system, it uh, lets you do like powerful system privileges by exploiting a TCP IP service. And this can run as a worm, so there's no user, or, yeah. oh wait, no, that's the next one. And then there's no user interaction on this one, which is known as CVE 34718. And that lets you execute code remotely through a TCIP bug, and that's through the worm. Sorry, going too quick. And the, there's not much detail that has been published by Microsoft about this and why it's doing that. So it's kind of difficult for people to have the patch priority. And they haven't found it in the wild, but they're like, yeah, there's exploitation more than likely for this. And then the next is Uber Breach, which Sam Curry, which is a security engineer at Yuga Labs, has said it is a total compromise and then this person, once they got in, they were able to access the vulnerability reports, they were able to access the email dashboards, a Slack server, and everything for Uber. And they immediately like disabled their Slack communications after they got a message from one of their users saying, I announce I'm a hacker and Uber has suffered a data breach. And then he began on leaking all of their uh, top secret servers and all their internal databases in the Slack channel. I saw they like, leaked an explicit picture somewhere in the Slack channel. And uh, he was also 18 years old when he did this. So he, yeah, still currently, as of yesterday, he was 18. Maybe his birthday's today. But he was able to do this through a phishing attack on an Uber worker, and then he was able to gain his foothold with a single text message. And yeah, that's bad that he was able to do all this just by getting a phishing breach. And then uh, Hacker One commented for their bug bounty program on Uber, which is supposed to be kind of secret because if people are like reporting vulnerabilities, you don't want everyone finding that. But he was able to steal all of their bug bounty data before they deleted it. So now like all of the vulnerable Uber code is now just gone. And then the Mr. Curry, the security advisor, said it seems like maybe they're, wait, it seems like maybe there's this kid who got into Uber and doesn't know what to do with it and is having the time of his life kind of in the Uber database. And he said, why did I do this? Because the security was terrible and the driver should get better pay. That was his motivation. So also iOS 16 has just came out. And there's a lot of changes. I do have an iPhone, so I'm gonna like kind of show for a little bit. But they have message editing. You can do multi-layered photos now, make things pop. They have lock screen widgets, a bunch of lock screen like photo things that you can do now and a lot more. And they also have a rapid security responses. So rather than publishing formal 
like, oh, this is iOS, blah, 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 this is iOS, blah, 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 they can just start beaming out security updates, which is pretty good for security. Um, and then something called lockdown mode, and it's like super protective, it kind of restricts some of the message attachments, web page are slower, like FaceTimes, things like that are like harder to access, and that's to prevent state-sponsored spying, which I think is pretty cool that they're at least trying to take a stab at it. And then also the patch came out. And there is a likely exploited in wild zero day, which was a kernel level uh, code execution bug being tracked at that, and it was reported by an anonymous researcher, which then they fixed it with the secure, uh, improved bounds checking. So in theory, it should be fixed now. And then this patch um, follows one a couple weeks ago that, uh, uh, that, this patch follows one covered a few weeks ago which they found two other zero days, making this the eighth zero day that Apple has patched so far this year alone. Whew, stumbled through those a little bit. Sources, and without further ado, we have this week's presentation. We have Asa Horn with the week two demo walkthrough. Ashley is gonna present on Bifrost C2 server. Ash, er, Sarah is gonna do uh, phishing analysis, and Alex Beaver is going to do changing user and organizational cybersecurity behavior. We ball. 